structure of data structure in Java. Dynamic memory allocation with the help of self-referencing data objects. Now let us look at these. As I was telling in the previous video, dynamic memory allocation means when the work is going on, that time if we attach more and more items to the list. Now self-referencing data objects help us to create this kind of link, link or chain or you know, list. Now what are those? Where suppose I have got memory allocation done for one data. Now here I will keep two types of data. One is the value and the other is a link to the next data. How? This is how I will create another of uh, same type and I will tell the address to the previous one. Now this is what we are going to look at in detail. Can you see there is a chain formation, it is multiple items which all of them are now going to store something which is special in nature. That is the first one will tell where the second one is. The second one will tell where the next one is. And in this way, we can go on connecting one after another and we can even attach new new items to this chain. Now this kind of chain is called a linked list and these kind of objects are called self-referencing data objects. These are looking very empty like. Let us, go in, let us fill some data and values and see what a chain will look like. Yes, this is one of the very famous pictures, no, diagrams, oh, connection, formation of what a linked list is. Here what is uh, being shown is these all are internal addresses of each of these and these are the external data that we are storing in the cells. Now these data part and these are the address part. And each cell is going to contain an address. Address, if you remember, is an internal value. So each cell is going to store an address of its next uh, connection. So if I now say I start from this position, that is F4. This F4 is an internal memory address, which I had shown in one of the previous videos as a hexadecimal value then this is the current location and the next data is present in E3. E3 is just a representation of an internal hexadecimal memory address. And in this way, we can go on attaching more and more data, self-referencing data objects to the list even after the list is completed in the first go. So this brings us to expansion of the list during the compilation is going on. How can that be done? We are going to look into the algorithm and the program in the upcoming videos. Okay?